push forward to the edge of the wood line. Three section firm. A British platoon commander is leading his men through a forest in Bavaria. They're launching an attack on a village to clear it of insurgents. They're taking part in a live fire exercise involving 19 NATO and partner nations. This training event is the biggest multinational exercise held here in Germany since reunification. Uh, the platoon commander is going to give a uh, quick set of battle orders for these uh, sections to move forward here um, and then the forward section is going to be launched onto the houses. Use smoke uh, to give them some cover and then they'll start clearing through the buildings uh, to the forward edge of the village and then from there they'll then press on. Dubbed Sabre Junction, the exercise is hosted and organized by the US Army Europe's Joint Multinational Training Command in Grafenwehr. The vast training area of Grafenwehr and Hornfels to the south and much of the civilian landscape between them has been turned into a virtual battlefield for the whole month of October. This is not a pre-deployment training for Afghanistan, but it does draw heavily on lessons learned from that conflict and from Iraq. That's the village down there. Right, so, peel your guys onto this side, on that side of the track, okay? Yeah. Sabre Junction aims to prepare troops for any kind of future conflict that requires a multinational response. This event prevents uh, potential adversaries of the future just through the ability for the nations participating to show a readiness uh, to take on uh, new challenges. Again, criminal or insurgent. Uh, conventional, even electronic warfare or cyber uh, warfare type uh, scenarios uh, are being worked out in this exercise to a low scale. Uh, and it's those types of things that as we practice, we get better. As we get better, uh, we prevent a, uh, a risk to any adversary that they may not be willing to take. As the British platoon advances, German fighter jets above drop live bombs on targets in the Grafenwehr training area. The exercise requires a lot of coordination between the different nations. It's meant to be as realistic as possible without hurting anyone. So we can see a, a press target here. What is this? Why is it here? Yeah, it's classed as a friendly target and it's a judgmental target, so we, we train the soldiers not to engage, uh, obviously, people like friend, uh, press or civilians. The exercise involves 4,200 US troops and some 1,800 soldiers from other NATO and partner nations. The main objective is enhancing their interoperability. The business of fighting as, uh, as coalitions, whether in a formal alliance like NATO or coalitions of the willing, um, will always involve burden sharing uh, and uh, working very closely together. So uh, at the tactical level, manoeuvring through each other's battle space. Uh, and if we develop the understanding and the capability to work properly with one another, all the issues, the frictions of war, um, will be much more easily resolved. As the Brits continue their advance in Grafenwehr, a hundred kilometers further south in the Hohenfels training area, US and other NATO forces are preparing a similar operation to free a village. American, Czech and Bulgarian soldiers are playing insurgents. You know these guys? Uh, sorry? I'll link up with you. Right? Okay. okay. They expect to be attacked by a unit of the 2nd US Cavalry Regiment. They've been waiting for three days, and it could happen at any time. For them, training interoperability is mainly about communicating with each other in English. The valuable for us from this exercise is that we work in an international environment. We have we have task force, which uh, consists of Czech company, uh, American company, and Bulgarian company, which is for us demanding, and also it's good to train communication between those different uh, units. Playing the enemy helps the soldiers to understand what they're up against in counterinsurgency operations. But the US commander leading this attack must be much more methodical and careful in his approach. 
as a military commander, he's using all of his combat uh, functions, all of his combat power available to him to include his, as you hear the uh, aircraft, that is a friendly aircraft flying overhead, which means that the, the U.S. commander has eyes on the objective right now. He's identifying the enemy positions that are the most threat to him, and he's using all of his assets to remove the most lethal targets from him now in, in a deliberate fashion so that he doesn't put American soldiers in harm's way uh, as he makes his approach into the city. And so the waiting game continues. The soldiers get ready for a long night. They'll be sleeping in shifts, if at all. Most of them expect the attack to happen around 4 or 5 in the morning. At least that's when they would do it. I'm Mike Mühlberger reporting for the NATO Channel from Grafenwöhr in southern Germany.